Hey, what's going on? It's Jeff Newbert from ChasingStrength.com. And in today's video, we are covering part two in how can I press the blank kilogram kettlebell? Okay. And this is actually part two in a multi-part series where we're covering five different strategies to improve your press or the next size kettlebell that you can't currently press. Okay. In our last video, we covered the first two strategies for you to press the blank kettlebell, right? The blank size kettlebell, whatever that number is for you, fill in that blank. So in today's video, we're covering the third strategy, which admittedly is kind of a different, maybe even slash weird strategy, and that is train your core, okay? Now, when most of us think of the core, we think of images of a six pack, right? Like the six pack abs, or we think about exercises like crunches, planks, and sit-ups, those sorts of things. But the truth is there's a lot more to the core than most of us. In fact, yeah, I'd say most of us were ever taught. In fact, I would argue, based on golly, 35 years of experience now, that you actually have three different cores. Let's take a brief overview, okay? Number one is called your inner unit. That's your deep inner core, okay? We'll flash a picture of that up here on the screen. Those are also known as your local stabilizers, depending on if you've done any research on this and whether alternate names are important to you, okay? So this is the muscle group, okay, that generates IAP, which is also called intra-abdominal pressure. And that's mission critical to stabilize your spine, pelvis, and some would even argue your shoulder blades. Okay, this is the stabilization you developed as a baby and a toddler that got you upright and walking without falling down continuously. Okay, it also protects your central nervous system or your CNS, which is comprised of your brain and your spinal cord. So pretty important area, right, to protect. So what's important to know is without this stabilization, your body splints, okay, air quotes there, splints joints by tightening muscles to keep you from moving into ranges of motion that your CNS feels like it can't control and would threaten your body or your CNS, okay? This also protects your lower back while pressing, for example. And if your lower back arches when you press, okay, these muscles are weak. What muscles? The deep core musculature, all right? How do you know for sure if this is a problem? Well, you're actually just going to take that smartphone of yours and you're going to turn it around and you're going to film yourself pressing a kettlebell. If your back arches, there's a very good chance that your brain will not let you put any more weight over your head because it believes that you cannot stabilize that lower back properly and keep yourself from injuring yourself, okay? Hopefully that makes sense. Now, the second group of muscles that make up the core is called your outer unit. We'll throw a picture up here. This is quite complicated, so we'll keep it superficial here. These are known as your global stabilizers or your sling systems, okay? And this is typically what we think about or start to think about generally when we think about abs, right? Now, I'm not sure if you can see this up here on the screen, but uh, if you look at the anterior oblique sling system, you'll see a red patch, and that is the six-pack abs. And that's what most people, again, think of when they think of core, Okay, but this whole system, the global stabilizers, these sling systems include a lot more muscles, including your glutes, your adductors, your lats, your lower back muscles, to name but some. And again, there are more, but this is a superficial overview. The point is that these muscles are the muscles that move you and not necessarily stabilize you unless your stabilizers don't work and then they're pulling double duty, okay? These muscle groups are designed to absorb, redirect force from the ground and create the movements that you want. For example, pressing a heavy kettlebell over your head, okay? And then there's the third core, which I call the hidden core. And it's a group of muscles that practically control everything, okay? They are the foundation for working in tandem with the inner unit and in creating the intra-abdominal pressure. And more importantly to your press, the hidden core is responsible for keeping your shoulder blades functioning properly or gliding up and down around your rib cage so you can actually put your arm overhead and press that heavier kettlebell. So it could very well be that the reason you can't press that next size kettlebell is that your brain is protecting you from damaging your shoulder because your hidden core isn't working properly. And you know what? The fact of the matter is, your brain body is just smart like that, right? And thank God it is. Otherwise, we'd be constantly injuring ourselves through doing stupid things. Okay. Now, I know that some of this stuff may sound far-fetched, especially if you don't have a background in human physiology, but we're just going to cover off some of the things that the research says. Number one, decrease in core stability is correlated with a loss of maximal shoulder strength. You know what? You're right. That does sound helpful in maximum strength work, like training your kettlebell press. Number two, loss of lumbopelvic control, aka core stability, increases shoulder torque in baseball pitchers. Increased torque. Think about twisting off a turkey leg, okay? So 
If it does it at high speed in baseball picture, pictures, pitchers, excuse me, probably does it at slower speeds in kettlebell lifters. Okay. Number three, a positive correlation between a loss of core stability and increased shoulder joint dysfunction has been noted. Okay. So if your inner unit isn't working properly, you're more likely to have what we call wonky shoulders. Number four, core stability training has been shown to improve throwing velocity. Okay. Think speed and power in handball players. All right. Now, doesn't that sound like it might be important for any overhead lifting? And number five, greater shoulder disability is correlated with greater core stability deficits. Okay. Now, all that being said, I think it makes pretty good sense that if these correlations show up in athletes who are active, that they would also show up in other active population groups, like guys like you and me hoisting kettlebells over their head, right? So if you haven't directly trained your inner unit, outer unit, and hidden core, there's a very strong chance that you're leaving low hanging fruit, several extra kilograms, in fact, on your press or off your press or on the proverbial branches, however you want to view this. Okay. So if you don't know where to start your core training or what the best core training exercises are for your press or want a roadmap of what to do when, then I'll leave a link to my program, Systematic Core Training for Kettlebells, in the video description below for you to check out. And remember, in some, if not many cases, there's more to pressing a heavier kettlebell and that next size kettlebell than just pressing more. So yeah, you can combine the pressing more strategy we used in our last video with systematic core training and actually speed up your results. In our next video, we'll cover a simple and actually pretty easy way some people get more reps and in some cases almost immediately jump up a full kettlebell size in just a few minutes. All right? So stay tuned for that one. In the meantime, hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did, click the like button, smash the subscribe button. Button. If you're not a subscriber already, share it with a friend you know is looking to boost their press. And finally, leave me a comment, a classy comment, no less, in the comment section below this video if you've experienced your press increasing by doing extra core work. And if so, what kind of core work was it? All right. Until next time, my friend, stay strong.